load of prospects on there, one of whom is obviously Jesse Rodriguez, good friend. Unfortunately, for one reason or another, we were unable to do so. But uh, I'm happy that we finally got this opportunity to get back in the ring, and Saturday night will be no different. I'm here to do my job, get a, get a W, and show the world that I'm, I'm still here and that there's still plenty more of Mikey Garcia. I was just about to mention that. In a recent Matchroom interview and just there, you've made it very clear that this is the fight to tell everybody Mikey Garcia's back. So how do you plan on sending that message to the competition that you're still here and you're still as dangerous as ever? Well, I want to make a statement. I want to come in there and show all my skills that I have. I want to show that I haven't lost a beat, that I haven't lost any step, that I'm still as quick and strong as ever, and that I'm hungry and motivated to, to get bigger fights. And winning this fight in a, in a very clear manner will allow me to show that and, and, and tell the world that. You are in the ring with a very tricky and awkward southpaw in Sandor Martin. What do you expect him to bring on Saturday? Oh, I expect the best version of Sandor Martin. You know, I think this is a great opportunity for him, and I don't think he plans on on passing it by, you know, on letting it pass by. So I expect the best uh, Sandra Martin on Saturday night, but that also helps me, motivate me, and pushes me to, to you know, dig deep and give the very best that I have. You know, I want to make sure that I, I look great, that I look spectacular, and that no matter what he has on Saturday night, I got something for that. There is a lot of respect between the two of you. Sandor has told us how much he respects yourself, respects your family. He's also contrasted that by saying he's going to be coming into the ring with a no-mercy mindset. He also says that, well, his exact quote was that he's going to be stealing the big fights from you and also stealing your future in the sport. How do you react to that? Well, that's exactly what I expect of him. You know, this is a huge opportunity for him. You know, um, this could possibly be, you know, the fight that he needs to, to get known. And he's trying to take full advantage of that. Um, this, this possibly is a much bigger fight for him than if he was fighting for a From time to talk about everything else besides Fury versus Wilder. I don't want to talk about it no more, but I still got two videos to do. It's going to be rough. So this week, we're going to have the return of Mikey Garcia taking on a Sandor Martin. Mikey Garcia's last fight. Man, let me pull it up real quick. By the way, the press conference from Mikey Garcia versus Sandor Martin is going to be starting momentarily. I'm guessing in about eight minutes or so. It's um, fight week, a card that really nobody really, hardcore fans, casual fans, nobody really cares about it. No real buzz behind it. But if you're home on Saturday night not doing anything, then this is something, you know, to watch. So here's the card. Mikey Garcia versus this Sandor Martin guy. Sandor Martin is 38 and 2 with 13 KOs, 28 years old. Jesus, 40 fights? He's been around for a while, huh? Or oh, having a lot of fights against a bunch of nothings. He's only been pro for just over 10 years. 10 years in one week, barely. And he's got 40 fights. I don't know if I've ever seen this guy fight before. I can't say I have. He's been fighting primarily in Spain. He did fight Anthony. Can you dig it? You get. You get for uh, Roly Romero in his last fight. Roly Romero is now fighting Tink Davis on pay-per-view in December. So, yeah, Mikey Garcia is fighting this guy. He's a southpaw. Uh, Mikey Garcia, 40 and one with 30 KOs. Last fight was in uh, just before lockdown, February of 2020. Basically, he's on what? A 20-month uh, layoff since he last fought against Jesse Vargas. Before that, Errol Spence. That was uh, almost another year layoff. Before that, Robert Easter, Sergey Limpignets, Adrian Broner. All of these above at 140 or above the 140-pound limit. Me personally, I think Mikey Garcia's weight cap should be 140. I don't really like him at 147 pounds, but hey, you know, it is what it is. You know, Eddie Hearn used to have like this big love affair with Mikey Garcia. Remember that? The hardcore boxing fans? Remember he was like really, you know, like chasing Mikey Garcia. And now that he has him, look at the type of fights that he's fighting. I'm not saying that Jesse Vargas wasn't, you know, a good fight especially for it to be a comeback fight after losing, uh, you know, Errol Spence. This Sandor Martin fight, if you don't know, they were really trying to um, uh, make 
uh, Mikey Garcia versus Pro Gray. But from my understanding, the zone didn't want to put up the money. So Mikey Garcia is guaranteed to make a lot of money. How much? I don't know. You know, but I, I just feel like this, you know, I'm a bit of a uh, bitter boxing fan these days. You know, I've been doing it so long, you know, 10 years now on YouTube. And I've been thinking to myself, like, yo, I'd be tired of these, like, you know, like tune up comeback fights. You know, f I feel that fighters who are supposed to be superstars, you know, or supposed to be, you know, like elite level, shouldn't be having comeback fights against a guy who Sandor Martins. You know, Sandor Martin is, you know, he has defeats on his record. For example, I wasn't feeling Tyson Fury coming back to fight Tom Schwartz. You know, Otto Wallin, I was like, okay, all right, Otto Wallin is undefeated. You see what I'm saying? But that's just me. You know, but I understand, you know, money, they couldn't put the fight together. And frankly, on the zone platform, you know, if it's not Pro Gray, by the way, Pro Gray has signed with um, Richard Schaefer's Pro Bellum. So they've been signing fighters pretty much from, you know, that works with anybody, guys like Bobby Jack. They've even signed Paul Butler. No need to deny. So it's going to be interesting to see if Pro Bellum works with his own because Richard Schaefer said, hey, you know, they're going to work with everybody. So now I'm just like, you know, I'm waiting for this press conference to start, by the way. I'm going to be starting in about five minutes or so. Put it this way. I'm not high on this fight. You know? You can't really blame him for taking the 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 uh, my, um, Errol Spence fight because he got to get on pay-per-view. Well, the Seferi fight, that was uh, um, that was um, Tyson Fury's comeback fight after weighing 400 pounds. That's kind of a different situation. And at that point in time, I didn't really consider Tyson Fury elite. You know, I was like, yo, he's good. He's going to be a contender. But listen, we're not talking about no Fury versus Wilder this video. I'm sorry. I don't want to talk about that shit. I've been under a lot of abuse this week because of some certain controversial videos I did and certain controversial opinions where it's just like, listen, sometimes I'm going to say this. It's going to be times you're going to agree with me and it's going to be times you're going to be like, yo, this fucking guy's an asshole, you know? But what I'm saying is, you know, a lot of people put a little too much into my videos. I'm just here, you know, smoking, vaping, talking about boxing. I'm not here coming up with, oh, I'm going to say this to get this or so they can do that. Like, you know, it's just... Uh, so, you know, that's why I've been really, really pushing off my uh, Fury versus Wilder 3 video. You know, like my, because it's like I did one Monday, but was that Sunday? I don't remember. And honestly, I don't want to talk. It's, 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 it's toxic to talk about. You see what I'm saying? You know, I could have done videos every day, but it's just, I don't want to talk about it. You know, so I'm probably going to do a video and it's already Thursday. So I got to get a video out by tomorrow, or at least Saturday. So I'm going to talk about it again because the pay-per-view buys have come out. You know, and that's worth talking about. I don't like exhibition fights either. I just cover them because, you know, like for one, I'm in a freak show boxing events anyway. I've always been like that. You know, I've covered Mickey Rourke fighting some guy that flopped. I've covered some shit in my, in my, in my day. I've covered some shit. I've, I covered, um... Uh, who's fighting this weekend, by the way, Zab Judah versus the um, Hebrew Hammer, Cletus Selton. But um, to talk about this Mikey Garcia card a little bit, it's just not nothing really there, you know. Elwin Soto, okay, WBO uh, light flyweight champion against Jonathan Gonzalez. Here's Elwin Soto, by the way. Let me pull him up. 19-1 and with 13 KOs. You know, it's 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 one of those fights where it's like it's an all Mexican showdown. There you go. That's the best way to put it. An all Mexican showdown. I covered his fight against um Angel Acosta, by the way. And I remember, wasn't that stoppage kind of controversial? So you got this uh fight. Brock Jarvis, um, who was signed with Eddie Hearn's match room. He's an Australian fighter. Big J has interest in that fight. Nikita Bobby returns, Mark Castro returns, and, you know, it's nothing really on this card that, you know, is really, you know, like calling me and like, yo, this is the, this is the fight to watch. This is the card to watch, you know, 
but I'm going to be here covering the fight. You know, nice little tone down. Also, on Friday on ESPN, or is it ESPN Plus? I don't remember. In fact, let me pull up the uh, schedule here now. You're going to have Emmanuel Navarrete taking on Joette Gonzalez. That's going to be a good fight. Looking forward to that. Earlier in the day, you're going to have that uh, Sky Sports card. But, uh, by the way, something to talk about that I'm probably going to have to do a video on. Um, how Matchroom and NTK fighters are like breaking apart. Did you notice like Matchroom stable is getting real slim? Real slim. Here, let's go look at the uh, uh, schedule here. It's from uh, Dan Rayfield's website, Fight Freaks Unite. I'll put the link right in the uh, chat for you guys. This is what's going on this weekend. Navarrete versus uh, Joe Gonzalez on ESPN+. Plus. This card right here. I don't know who any of these other people are. <laughs> the zone card we're talking about. Also this weekend, I'm going to try to find it and watch it. Miris Breedis, IBF Cruiserweight Champion. Taking on the Arthur Man. I'm going to be looking forward to that. The winner. Um, could possibly be fighting uh, Lawrence O'Cauley to unify the IBF and the WBO titles. They took uh, Tiafimo's date, October the 16th, Cletus Seldon versus William Silva. Daniel Gonzalez versus Petros Anayan. You also have Big Daddy Kane versus somebody in a versus match. Over on Sky Sports, Boxer, it's 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 real crazy to me that they don't have a TV deal here in the States um, for those Boxer Sky Sports shows. Hopefully ESPN Plus uh, picks them up in the future. But you got Savannah Marshall, that's one tall, beautiful drink of water right there, taking on a Lolita Muzila for Marshall's 168-pound WBO middleweight title. Huey Fury versus Christian Hammer. You never know about Huey Fury, man. So young, so good, so experienced. For for his uh, age, hey T, you're slimmer than the matchroom stable. How dare you? Yes, I've put on some pounds, but I'm losing them, right? I'm working on it. I'm a foodie now. I have a reason. You know, now that you brought that up, you know, I like to boast about this. Do you know that I'm listed in the top 10% of eatery restaurant reviewers on Google? Did you know that? That just happened out of nowhere. So basically during COVID, I got fat. I started eating all these fine ass foods. And got that. Yeah. So, you know, check me out on uh, Google at T-Street Controversy. Got like six million something uh, review and photo views. Like I'm like the man on Google with coming food. But anyway, moving on. So this card right here, nice solid card. You know, too bad I'm going to have to find a way to watch it. Because it's not legally. Oh, shit. The press conference. Hold on. My bad. Pull it up. Oh, we already started. Oh, Lord. And they don't got no sound, guys. Let me check. Let me check something. They got sound issues. They got sound issues. They got sound issues. It's on, but they're having sound issues. So let me see if I can pull it up on the zone and we watch it on there. And don't call me fat. How dare you, man? Man, I've been getting bullied all week, man. Them motherfucking, like, I just did a video with my thoughts on Wilder. Now, you know, I'm Larry Elder. I'm motherfucking uh, male, uh, uh, motherfucking um, uh, Candace Owens. Like, bro, I'm being called all these names. I'm a human being, man. Shit, I got emotions. I'm pulling up this press conference from Mikey Garcia. Like they whooping my ass in the comments. They're like, of course, all the clans are going to park. We're expecting a full house. I believe what over 8,000 tickets sold. Incredible. What does uh, Fresno love about boxing so much? We've seen some some great fights here. A lot of fans show up. They absolutely love the sweet science. They like, of course, all the clans are going to run to his channel. <laughs> I've been here a couple of times of uh, Mexican Americans as well, and, and Mikey Garcia, All right, I'll be back. stars in that respect in boxing as well. They know their boxing here. They appreciate great action. You have a great open air facility as well here with 
the sun's going to be shining on. So this is a great place to come. And, and I think it's important to, to make sure that we visit these kind of areas as well. We've got your traditional New Yorks and Las Vegas and, and LA as well. But great to come for a fight night in Fresno. And the fans are going to create a great atmosphere on Saturday. And the fans are getting to see one of the best pound-for-pound uh, -pound fighters in the world, Mikey Garcia. He faces a fighter that we don't know too much about, but we should learn about this guy. He's capable of pulling off an upset out of Spain, Sander Martin. What do you know about him? I know a lot about him. You know, he's part of the, the matchroom roster as well in, in Spain. He's headlined a number of events um, on our, our big Spanish shows live on DAZN as well. And when you looked at the opponent options for Mikey Garcia, you know, you've got a guy in Mikey Garcia that's been inactive for around 18 months. Great victory last time out against Jesse Vargas. That came just before the pandemic. He's been on the sidelines. Sandor Martin's been nice and active. He's been defending his European Championship. He's top 15 in the world right now. But I chose Sandor Martin because... I knew he'd come to win. And this is the opportunity of a lifetime for him and his father and his family. And I want someone that's going to test Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia is, is a pound-for-pound pound great. He's a four-division world champion. But if you're going to give him a fight that he might think is there to sort of dust the rust off, put him in with someone that has the opportunity to change his life. Put him in with someone that will do everything he can to take this opportunity with both hands. Sandor Martin is here to win. He has a massive task ahead of him on Saturday. But I promise you, he will give it everything on Saturday night. And that's what you want. And what are you setting this fight up for? If Mikey Garcia wins as he is expected to, if he wins this fight on Saturday, what's next for him? Well, I think everybody talks about the Regis Progre fight. Of course, that's a, a great fight that has a lot of potential as well. The fact is, is that Mikey's been out of the ring for, for 19 months. And that's a long time for a fighter. We've seen that a lot coming out of the pandemic. We've seen fighters struggle to deal with that inactivity as well. So, again, I think this is a lot more dangerous than just to, you know, dust the rust off, as I said. This is going to be a competitive fight from a guy that's coming to win. But if Mikey is the fighter that he's perceived to be, we expect him to, to put a dominant performance on and move forward forward and I believe the Regis Pro Grey fight is a fight that should happen in the early 2022 calendar. And the rest of the car, what's the one fight that you think could steal the show? Does it involve Edwin Soto, perhaps? Always, always. You know, these, these smaller guys are just giving us tremendous fights. I mean, you remember the fight with uh, Soto on the last Canelo Billy Joe Saunders card. It was a back and forth affair. This is a really tough fight for him against Gonzalez. It's the mandatory challenger for the WBO title. It's a very tough fight. That will be an all action fight. Look out for Jesse Bam Rodriguez as well. This is a guy that Mikey Garcia and Robert Garcia have spoken so fondly about. Um, and of course, as well, Brock Jarvis, our. Australian star coming here to make his matchroom debut as well. This kid's got everything really, really exciting. Diego Pacheco and, of course, Mark Castro. I was going to ask you about him next. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, what an opportunity for Mark Castro. You know, from Fresno, gets a chance to fight here in front of his home crowd. He's looked great so far. He's still at the early stages of his professional development. But what an opportunity for him to fight in his home crowd. And he's going to get a great reception. And what do you feel right now about the state of boxing after that amazing fight we saw last week with Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder? The sport is buzzing right now. It's, it's all over social media. People are clamoring for more boxing. Of course, you've got Dillian White and Otto Walla next week, this fight card as well. What do you feel about the state of boxing right now? I think it's in a good place. You know, everyone always likes to champion the boxing is dead mantra. Couldn't be further from the truth. It's a load of rubbish. You know, last week was such a great week for, he for heavyweight boxing, but for boxing in general. You know, a fight of the year contender between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. But it, it captivated the audience. It got the casual fans interested in the sport we love. And there's so much more to come from the sport of boxing outside of the heavyweight division. But that is always the trophy, isn't it, of, of the, the sport. And if the heavyweight division is thriving, the rest of the sport will follow. Joshua against Usyk, tremendous occasion between two brilliant heavyweights. Didn't go our way. Like you said, Otto Wilding against Dillian White in a couple of weeks. Tremendous fight as well. Um, and right now, so many great fights to be made. Of course, when we look at the closing schedule of the year, we not only have the World Championship quadruple header with Demetrius Andre, but you have the small matter of Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, and Tiafimo against George Cambosos all coming to the zone, probably in the space of three weeks. So a huge end to the year. But we must make sure we see those guys fighting each other in the early part of 2022. Yeah, well, I got you up here on the hot seat. Let's talk about it. Who do you think Devin Haney's going to fight next? And when is that Tiafimo Lopez fight with Cambosis going to happen and where? Well, I think, um, you know, the reports are that Ryan Garcia... The reports. You're the fight. man. Yeah, well, I don't, you know, it's, that's a Golden Boy show. I don't want to upset them. Okay. But, you know, Jojo Diaz looks like he'll fight uh, Ryan Garcia, which was very disappointing to Devin Haney because he was the mandatory challenger for that fight. But that's OK. Devin Haney, you know, we talked to Richard Comey, made them a huge offer. They're not queuing up to fight Devin Haney. You've got 
Maxi Hughes, IBO world champion from the UK on a great run as well. And then you've got the week after, could well be Tiafimo against George Cambosis. So there'll be three really good lightweight fights. To make the mega fights, those guys have got to face each other as well. But to get those three princes, I think we'll call them, not kings just yet, that's a, that's a big word, but to see those three close out the year in successive weeks on the zone is, is a, a big moment for the platform. And before we move on, I want to ask you about your card in two weeks, October 30th, the main event, Dillian White versus Otto Wallen, the number one contender position. So technically, hypothetically, the winner would face Tyson Fury. What are your thoughts on that matchup? Well, Dillian White's ready to, to face the, the winner of the weekend, which was Tyson Fury. So that fight should be called. But Otto Wallen is a very, very tough test. You see him nearly beat Tyson Fury. You know, a, ho a horrible cut come through in that fight probably should have got stopped. And it's another big banana skin for Dillian White on that card as well. Mary McGee uh, unified against Chantel Cameron, the WBC champion, Ring Magazine championship on the line. Big card from the O2 and a really important fight for the heavyweight division. Dillian White continues to take on all comers. He must get his shot at Tyson Fury and we'll be really campaigning for that. All right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, from the man himself, Eddie Hearn. And now for a few minutes, we'll take a quick break and be back and we'll be introduced to the latest signing for Matchroom Boxing. I look good, huh? You look great. The dude that beat the shit out of Ivan Baranchek. Eddie Hearn, Todd Grisham, and a man who just asked you, do I look good? What do you think, Eddie? <laughs> I think he looks great. You know, um, it gives us great pleasure, Todd, to, to welcome Montana Love to the Matchroom team, the DAZN platform as well. I watched this young man fight on the Jake Paul card um, on Showtime pay-per-view, and I just thought, wow, what a star. And when I got in touch and I heard the amazing news that he hadn't had a promotional deal. We were just all over it. it like, yeah, I mean, this kid can fight. He looks good. He's got unbelievable personality. He's willing to fight all these guys. He's come up on the rough side without being gifted anything. He's ready to jump in. This is a massive star at 140 pound division. And you're going to see this guy shine this year, in fact, live on the zone. So take us back when you got the phone call. Matchroom, Eddie Hearn wants to talk to you. What was your reaction? Uh, honestly, uh, I felt like it was a dream come true. You know, um, honestly, I've been reaching out to Eddie in a team for about quite some time. So to have it come now, it was is a beautiful thing. And for those who have never seen you fight before, how would you describe your style? Amazing. You know, <laughs> uh, I feel like um, I got everything. I can box. I can bang. Uh, I pretty much showed showed it all. My last fight, you know, I'd, I'd have faced adversity. I got hit with very big shots. You know, I take nothing from Ivan. He was a, a, a hell of a fighter, great fighter. And Ivan Baranchuk, who yeah, you fought in Cleveland, right? Yeah, yeah. Ivan Baranchuk. He's a hell of a. He's a strong guy, you know. And it, it showed a lot. That fight. It showed a lot about me. And yeah, I'm, to sum it up, I'm an amazing fighter. So at 140 pounds, who do you see on the landscape? Who are we going to see Montana Love chasing? Um, right now with the team, after talking to the team, you know, we gonna, we rather take it, you know, step at a time. But the fight that I really do like is, uh, what's the kid's name? Um, he's getting ready to fight Vargas. I like... Uh, Zapata. I like that Zapata fight. Um, and then, you know, from after the Zapata fight, we definitely looked at, you know, do a, a, a um, Josh Taylor or Javante or whoever else, you know, Eddie has in front of me. What say you, Eddie? Who do you see this yeah, guy? I mean, I think that he's almost a little bit of a hidden secret before the last fight against Barancic. What fight? I mean, you know, he was right in the deep end in that fight. You saw Barancic in a fight of the year with Zapata, which was back and forward. You saw him in a good fight with Josh Taylor as well. He stepped up to the plate. That was another, you know, great fight with Berencic. Got buzzed in that fight, had to come back and, and laid him out as well in front of his own people in Cleveland as well, which is an important market for us. You know, I think you look at that fight with Jake Paul, you look at the subscriber base of the zone, we see a huge amount of boxing fans in Cleveland. And I, I see this man headlining there next year for sure. For now, he's either going to box on the Devin Haney card or the Tiafimo Lopez card at, at the uh, beginning of December. He's going to get a chance to shine, keep learning, keep improving keep pushing that profile and next year I see him in with all those guys at 140 you know you've got Mikey Garcia here on this card he's another guy that could be a huge fight Devin Haney's going to move up to 140 at some point as well Javonta Davis against Do you imagine Javonta Davis against Montana Love in Cleveland massive. I mean this is a massive massive fight this guy will take on all comers but we'll do it at the right pace as well he still needs to learn his trade he still needs to go through those tough fights and we want to build him to superstar status when you've got someone that's got the personality and ability of Montana Love, do you know what, Todd? I don't even have to be any good because I've got it right in front of me. 
You know, I don't have to lie to you. I don't have to try and get him to talk more or, you know, dress up in brighter clothes. It's right there in front of you. The, the young man's got it all, and he can really fight. And, you know, DAZN subscribers are going to really enjoy watching this young man's development. Well, you got the bling. Tell us about this. Love hurts. How many diamonds are in that thing? Uh, that I can't tell you. I know this is worth uh, the chain and everything. I got the paperwork, got insurance on. It's worth sixty-seven thousand. Um, got you know, I got insurance on my piece and everything. But you know, the love hurts. It just you know, it represents a lot about me. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of things I'd have been through. You know, and like the first woman I ever fell in love with, which was my mother. She passed away. She left me. You know, so love hurts, man. In so many different ways, it just speaks a lot to me. You know. Who's your favorite fighter when you look uh, around boxing right now? Who's the one guy that really impresses you the most? Right now, my favorite fighter, Canelo. Canelo, he, he's just a well-rounded fighter. You know, um, even when he's getting pressed through everything, the, what I learned about Canelo is just staying calm. And, you know, that's, that's my biggest thing, and that's just the biggest thing in life, period, is just stay calm through any situation. Stay relaxed. Stay, you know what I mean? Stay sane. And Canelo shows it all, man. He's, he's an amazing fighter. All right, so give us a prediction. What's going to happen? Mikey Garcia, Santa Martin, Saturday night here in Fresno. Um, honestly, I don't know Sanio Martin, but, you know, from me knowing and watching Mikey, uh, I think Mikey win by knockout. There you have it. Eddie, what's the future for this guy? How, how big and bad can he be? Well, the future, you know, when you're, when you're with us and with the zone is really down to your own ability. You will get every opportunity to progress. You will get every opportunity to shine in big fights as well. And he can do it. You know, American boxing is crying out for superstars, crying out for guys with big personalities that can really fight as well. And, you know, as I said, coming from Cleveland, putting in a performance like that in Cleveland on a card like that, we are very honored to get this young man's signature, and we look forward to a huge future with him. Yeah, and what was it like growing up being a boxer in Cleveland? Give us your background story. How did you get into fighting? Uh, I started boxing when I was five years old. Uh, me and my brothers and them, we used to fight in the house all the time. Uh, my father died when I was three, so my mother, you know, she a single woman. She can't really teach a man how to be a man. So in certain areas, in certain aspects, she just put us in sports to try to learn from other, you know, from other being around other, you know, good men. So. Um, I had my first fight. I was in the gym. I was a gym rat for three years. Had my first fight at eight. Uh, I won my first belt in Kansas City at ringside at eight years old, and that right there just made me fall in love with it, you know. But you know, don't get me wrong. At times, growing up, it's it's hard to stay focused in the gym because all your friends they playing basketball, they playing football. They don't understand this grind. You know what I mean? For the boxing, it's just a one man sport, a lonely sport. It's the hurt business, you know. And you know, at times it's definitely you know hard to stay focused. But you know, as I got older and been through my process, you know, as far as going to prison and everything, and, you know, it just, it was just time to buckle down and take it serious, and I'm here now, you know? All right, well, we'll give you the last word. What would you like to say to your family and friends watching right now? What's the Hurt Business going to be like on the zone? Uh, we're going to make it the pretty business. You know, uh, too pretty. We're going to put on the show. We're going to get the fans a lot to watch. Uh, we're going to be very exciting. And I might be having a conversation with y'all in the middle of the fight. I don't know, man. <laughs> so get y'all tickets. Anytime I fight, it's going to be a show. I appreciate you guys. Continue to watch me, support me. I fight for you. Awesome. Can I wear that uh, Saturday night during the fight? Yeah, you can have whatever you like. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back as we count down the press conference here in Fresno. Yeah, that's a uh, nice signing. He uh, fought Ivan Baranchek on the Jake Paul Woodley card, the fight of the night, if you haven't seen it. Well, we're in these orchards, uh, almond orchards, outside of Fresno and uh, Central Valley. The gentleman brought us to his uh, almond orchards to show us the impact of, of the, the, the lack of water to, to, the, to the fields here. Water allocation has been, you know, continuously over the years uh, allocated elsewhere in different areas, and then they're being impacted, you know, severely. And you can see the the devastation. You know, no water. You know, crops can't grow. They have to pull the trees because they're, they're they're dying. They're dead. And it's not just the farm owner that gets impacted. When you look at all the families that work at the farm that now have no job. They were telling me that uh, Mendota has a has had up to I think 40% unemployment rate. Unemployment, uh, it's, it's, it's like nowhere else. 
I'm Joe Del Bosque. I'm a farmer out here on the west side of the San Joaquin Valley. Agriculture here uh, is very. They want to watch this because we do grow. Some I don't mean to be disrespectful to the agriculture, but you know we can be you know talking about something else, like uh, how you know this card is not really really calling me. Here, let's go uh, look at it. We'll talk about it. Wait this way. There we go. So here is the card. Mikey Garcia, Sandor Martin, Elwin Soto versus Jonathan Gonzalez, Jesse Rodriguez versus uh, Jose Alejandro Burgos, Brock Jarvis versus a uh, Alejandro Farias Rodriguez. You know, it's, I mean, you know, it's something to do on Saturday night. After all, there's no other boxing on Saturday night, right? David Cuellar versus Moises Fuentes. You know, unless you're watching that on ESPN+. Plus. You know, overall, Saturday is pretty busy, though. Actually, the weekend's pretty busy of like B-level ish uh, boxing. You know, for example, starting on a uh, Friday night, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Emmanuel Navarrete versus Joe Gonzalez. That's going to be top rank on ESPN plus midday here in the States. You're going to have um, Miras Breeders versus Arthur Mann. No US TV deal, but I'll find some type of way to, to watch it. You're also going to have Savannah Marshall versus Lolita Muzila. Huey Fury, Christian Hammer, Chris Eubank Jr. No TV deal here in the States. Midday card here in the States, but somehow I'll watch. Um, and then what was supposed to be Tiafimo Lopez versus... Um, oh, wait, they're back. Who is this? Oh, this is that. This is the agriculture dude. I don't know if we want to listen to him, but I don't want to be disrespectful. Well, anyway, let me wrap up. You got Cletus Selden versus a William Silva. This was supposed to be Lopez versus Kim Bosos. Daniel Gonzalez versus a Pedro Sinanian. And that's your fights of the weekend. You know, nothing, you know, it was just like, yeah, you know. But all right, let me get back to the press conference. What bills can people support? What things can they do legislatively that you guys are behind to help solve that crisis? Well, right now, there, there's going to be an initiative uh, in California that's going to allow for funding uh, for additional water resources infrastructure. So that's gonna be important. But more importantly is that there are some current efforts being made in Washington, D.C. to change the level of water that comes from Northern California into the Central Valley. And we've got to have people send uh, letters to their congressmen telling them to be very focused and make sure that we get treated fairly. How long has this been a problem? Is this something that's popped up recently with droughts? Has it been climate change related or has this been something you've been dealing with for decades? Actually, it's really not so much uh, climate change. It has more to do with basically the changes in the regulations on how water is utilized in California. And it, and it all started in 1991 when there uh, was big chunks of our water supply that was re rededicated uh, to uh, the environmental uh, community. And ever since then, more and more has been shifted in that direction. And I'm not saying anything bad about the environment. What I'm saying is, is that when these big decisions are being made by whether it's Washington, D.C. or Sacramento, they have to try to do it in a balanced way to make sure that the people, Central Valley, California in general, get treated equally when they make those decisions, because uh, it doesn't make any sense to shift water and put thousands of people to the unemployment lines. And Mayor Dyer, I know you're in the city of Fresno, but you're very familiar Man. with this issue as well. What things, uh... Hey, listen, I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but this is a boxing stream. Even though we cover other topics, you know, this is a boxing stream, you know? I mean, I want everybody in California to get their water. I mean, now I feel bad. Let me turn it back up. Areas. Uh, it also applies to all of our urban areas. The simple fact is, as Mario was saying, is 80% of the water in California is north of the Delta. 80% of the need is south of the Delta. And so when you have the demand, 80% of the demand south of the Delta, and we're not the ones able to access that water, we got a serious issue. And when you add the drought on top of that, it makes it even worse. And so not only do we have difficulty uh, providing water for our farmers to be able to grow food uh, to distribute throughout the, the world, but uh, now we're, we're struggling with good drinking water. So it is a serious issue, uh, not just drought related, not just related to the, to the climate. Uh, simple fact is we need water south of the Delta. 
And last question on this. Uh, it's nice to have Mikey Garcia as a good spokesperson. He, he really, uh, the way this has affected his family, um, extended I don't family know, man. working on farms when he was younger. It's, it's nice, nice to have someone like that. As the I don't know what the hell is going on. First of all, we're really grateful for him to have the interest the hell? and uh, the eagerness to want to help uh, because he, his brother, Robert, uh, and his dad uh, all worked in the field, much like the majority of the, re the people that live here in the Central Valley, including myself. All farm workers at some point, we, we know the struggle. Uh, and, and going back to this water shortage is that the first people to be impacted when there is water shortage is the far farm workers. They're the first ones. Yeah, they got me out the mood. I want to see some, things. you know, some press conference. So that, that's why that our organization has tried to uh, to raise the attention to that because you you can't have that kind of impact and think that farm workers are basically uh, acceptable collateral damage they're not they're they're humans and and they need a voice and that's what we try to do well, thanks for all you've done for this cause, and I appreciate you joining us. And Mayor Dyer, I was going to ask you quickly before I know you have something special for Eddie Hearn. Just talk to us about boxing and Fresno. Why does this community love the sweet science so much? We love we love boxing in Fresno. We have a history of boxing here. Uh, as you know, we've raised some of the greatest boxers in, in the world uh, right here in, in Fresno. Uh, and we're doing everything we can to promote uh, Fresno. We want this to be the entertainment hub of Central California. And and uh, certainly when Eddie Hearn chooses this venue right here at Chichancy Park to have a, uh, a fight like this, uh, it's, it's good for Fresno, it's good for the Valley. And, uh, and you know, we're going to get behind it. You're going to see this place rocking and rolling on Saturday night. Uh, when uh, our fighters uh, step into the ring. You got uh, Mark Castro from Fresno. We, we got Mark Castro, uh, homegrown, uh, graduated from uh, Sunnyside High School. He's 3-0, and three uh, knockouts. And Mark, uh, more than that, he's a great man. That's what I think. Uh, it's some money behind this somewhere. It's got to be. And, uh, he's, a, he's a man of God. That's why they're getting all this airtime, this juice. I my office here a couple of weeks ago. And I tell you what, he represents boxing very, very well in a very professional manner. And uh, he's somebody that our, our kids can look up to. And here in the downtown area, have you turned to boxing or seen uh, people here trying to get boxing grassroots area to get some of the, the poor youth in this area focused off the streets, dialed in? It's such a great sport in that regard, is it not? Yeah, you know, I, I spent uh, 40 years in the police department, uh, last 18 as a police chief before being the mayor. And uh, we had our Police Activities League, which is a huge boxing program. And we would bring uh, kids in from the inner city uh, every single day. Um, uh, one of my retired officers, Pete Santiano, mentored these kids. We'd have 50 or 60 of these kids uh, in the gym every single day. Uh, some of these kids uh, grew up in, in families where they had gang members there, uh, individuals who were flunking out of school, got into this boxing program, and I tell you, today they're excelling. Some of those, Cedro Ochoa, is now boxing professionally, and a number of others. So we're very, uh, we're, we're very much supportive of boxing, what that does for our youth, what that does for our valley, uh, the discipline that it instills in our youth. And so uh, anytime we bring something like this here to Fresno, uh, I think it serves as uh, you know, somewhat of a dream for these youth to be able to attend. So we look forward to Saturday. And we are all excited about Saturday. And before we go, I know you have something you'd like to say or give to Eddie Hearn. And it's a good thing. Some people want to give Eddie Hearn a bad thing, like a punch <laughs> in the mouth. But it's you not know that. what? Not, nothing but good here in Fresno for Eddie Hearn because Eddie, uh, Eddie chose Fresno to host this, uh, this venue site. And, uh, you know, we're, we're very, very uh, fortunate oh, man. Here because I know, I know there's, there's a lot of other cities uh, that, that could have had this, uh, this uh, fight on Saturday. Uh, but Eddie chose Fresno. And so uh, today, as a mayor of Fresno, I want to take this opportunity to, to recognize you. I know back in 2018, you, you uh, signed boxing's first billion-dollar deal. Uh, 20 months ago, you signed uh, Fresno's own Mark Castro uh, to be under your tutelage. And we're very much appreciative of that. But uh, as a mayor, I'm very appreciative of the fact that you chose not only Fresno, but downtown Fresno, right here at Chichancy Park, to be able to host this boxing match on Saturday and I know it's going to be a, a huge crowd and so I tell you what uh, what we're doing today I'm not going to uh, read I didn't sign up for this therefore, Eddie, uh, uh, but, but I will say this now therefore be it resolved that I Mayor Jerry Dyer 
do hereby proclaim Thursday, October 14th, 2021, to be matchroom boxing and Eddie Herndy what? in the city of Fresno. So, Eddie, wow. welcome right. to Fresno. Wow, thank, thank you, you very much. much. How the hell we get his own that. day? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for it, may, it may be the only How the hell that happened? That one in Fresno. Yeah, it will definitely be the only And, and anytime you want to come back to Fresno to bring boxing, our doors are wide open. I promise you we'll... Uh, We'll roll out the red carpet. There'll be no red tape. I really appreciate that. And thank you to Rick as well for your support. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. We hope we give the city a fantastic night on Saturday. All right. Well, you what know, in the world? Rick Meridian, thank, thank you for all you've done, done to promote, promote boxing, boxing here in Fresno and uh, all and making Fresno an entertainment venue. For He's the not even American. Do well, kids get off school? Now we get set to start our press conference as we count down Jesus. to Garcia versus Martin live on the zone. Bro, we haven't even got to the undercard yet. We're going to be here all night. I got shit to do. Oh, man, that was up. So listen, the press conference is starting right now. I'm guessing we just spent the whole half hour on nothing. What in the world? I mean, hey, you know, maybe I'm a little triggered, I guess. You know, I'm still recovering from Fury versus Wilder, you know. But anyway, it's supposed to be the Mikey Garcia versus Sandor Martin um, um, press conference. And so far, we've seen a whole bunch of talk about water in Fresno. No disrespect. I want you all to get y'all water. Um, Montana Love getting signed. And now Eddie Hearn and Matchroom getting their own day. So it is the 14th. So October the 14th is now... Eddie Hearn match room day <laughs> at Fresno, California of all places. Like what's the perks? Like, do you go somewhere and get like 10% off your Grubhub or something? It's gotta be some type of perks, right? Like what in the world is going on? So I'm guessing they're getting to the undercard now. Let's head back over. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe. Look, ain't nobody at this joint. Well, welcome back. And, uh, Are they? Todd Grisham and, and uh, uh, various guests as we start the main press conference for Saturday night's huge night of World Championship Boxing here in Fresno, live across the world on the zone. And before we talk about the championship fights and before we talk about the main event as well, I'm delighted to be joined by three incredible, incredible talents up here on the stage so many fighters at different stages in their career i guess when i talk about prospects the two men to my immediate right and left we can't really talk about prospects anymore because you're ready to start taking the big challenge down on my far left khalil ko who is more of that prospect stage right now but what a group of talent we have up here khalil i'll start with you um brilliant last time out on the devin haney card it's taking a little bit of time to come back while we were waiting to confirm our schedule, but you're here, October 16th, Fresno, ready to make another statement. Most definitely, you know, um, I'm just looking to build off of the next fight, you know, and get better. And, and I'm here with a former teammate, another friend, and we, we're going to put on a show. Everybody knows about you set up and obviously your, your former teammates as well, but not many people know outside of that. And I feel like your last fight, people just took up and stood, no, stood notice. I know it was a routine victory for you, but did you feel that people and the feedback that you received from your last fight really showed that people are excited about the journey of Kalilko? Most definitely, you know, the, uh, the outcome was bigger than I expected, you know, even when I, when, once I fought, the people who were yelling my name, I know I had my own section, but there were, there were a lot of other people that I didn't know that came and support me, and, and, and it, felt, it felt amazing. I know you're a few steps behind these guys as well, but you do have the ambitions to move quite quickly in the division. 175 pound, going to be your focus. Great division right now. And I think when you look at the fighters coming through and those prospects, you're really well placed. You've got a lot of those fighters, Better BF, Joe Smith, you know, coming towards the end of the tenure, Dimitri Bivo as well. But it's wide open, that division, over the next sort of 12, 18 months to really start making your stamp. Most definitely, you know, um, I'm here to make a statement on Saturday, you know, so they can recognize and, and see, see I'm coming. Well, I'm delighted to welcome back Nikita Ababi. Nikita, it's been a while. Um, firstly, how does it feel to be back? Where are you at? Your mind right now? You had that break. We felt like you needed that break. You came out the blocks real fast as a pro. Almost the wildness of that might have taken over. You've had a time just to step back, reassess your goals, and looking at you in training, you look absolutely ready to go on Saturday night. Yeah, I feel I feel amazing. I feel like I've never left. I'm back like I never left. Um, you know, a little, little, you know, I have to take care of a little things, you know, mental stuff, you know, family stuff, all that, you know, because when you're in the boxing game, you gotta eat, sleep, breathe only boxing, right? So, 
you know, I had to take care of a couple of things, and you know, now I'm back and I'm only breathing boxing. So, when you started out, you were, you know, thrown straight into the limelight. You're fighting on all these big cards, Madison Square Garden, all around the country as well. Did that come a little bit too quick for you? Did you feel as well, or you had a time to reflect? You seem like you really understand what's required now in the sport. We know that, obviously, you you, you know these YouTube guys, they're your fans as well. You, you embroiled yourself into that world a little bit, but the focus right now, you're ready to, to really make a move in this sport. Yeah, it's like when, in the beginning, like, I was, I feel like I was living in the moment. Like, I wasn't really comprehending, understanding that I'm fighting in Madison, that I'm fighting in the O2, that I'm fighting in, you know, Staples Center. And then, yeah, you know, it kind of, it kind of hit me, you know, at one step of thing. And, um, but now, now I have a lot, you know, I feel like I'm maturing. I'm 22 now and, you know, I have a better grasp. But again, like, I really feel like I'm a late bloomer and as where I'm at right now, I'm going to be nowhere in two, three years, so. Obviously, as well, you were one of the first fighters that we signed with Matt Trim and, and Dazone. The first. The first. The first. The first. The first. Come on, come on. And, and really, when you look at it, a lot of you guys now, you know, I find it hard to even call you prospects anymore. We're, we're two or three years on. You know, you've, you've been inactive a little bit in the last year, but, you know, Diego, I'll come on to him as well. You guys are like one, two, three fights away from being in some serious tests as well. That's exciting because I want to give you the chance to develop, but I also want to see what you're made of in, in, in the 160-pound particularly division. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you know, you move quick when you, when, when you uh, what a great promoter like yourself, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, it's like, you know, we're not, I guess you could say we're not prospects anymore. And um, in a couple of fights, you know, finish this Saturday, get another fight in December. And then, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting for the next years to come. Well, I'm really pleased to see you back, mate. Look forward to Thank you. White Chocolate putting on a show on Saturday. Probably one of the youngest in our roster, but also someone that's probably the most developed in terms of where they're at in their career and, and looking at championship fights. Diego Pacheco, welcome. You're going to have plenty of support here on Saturday. What a great stage for a big night of boxing. Um, still so young, but you've experienced all those things that Nikita's experienced as well. You boxed in Saudi Arabia. You've boxed, of course, in Mexico. You've boxed all over the States as well. A lot of people start talking about about championships for you in 2022 and a good test, good test for you on Saturday as you continue that progression. Uh, yeah, um, you know, I'm uh, like you said, still very young, but um, moving pretty fast in the sport, and I feel like I'm uh, moving at the right pace. You know, um, every test that's been put in front of me, I've been able to take care of, and I just look forward to keep uh, doing the same thing that I've been doing. Obviously, you've been getting that, that quality time in the ring as well, but the sparring you've had as well has been consistent, professional, and impressive as well. Do you think that's been a big part of your develop, development as well? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I've, uh, I'm from L.A., so I'm, I'm really blessed to have w be able to work with all the world champions down there with a few names, David Benavidez, uh, Canelo, and a, a lot of other guys who have uh, helped me develop and have taught me a lot of things in the gym. And, yeah, I'm really uh, thankful for that, and um, I'm happy with um, how my career has been going so far. I'm, I'm true Mexican. Place. I think Saturday will be another big statement, and then we move on to championships, late part of 2022. Whatever you do, wherever you're tuned in to DAZN all around the world or here in Fresno, do not miss three of the most exceptional young talents in the sport, Diego Pacheco, Nikita Ababi, and Khalil Co as well, ready to put on a great show here in Fresno on Saturday. Guys, we're going to go back over. We're going to have a head-to-head -head up here, and then we'll bring the other fights up. Thank you. Maybe not a head-to-head. -head. Y'all watching this card? This is a cracker of a card. Matchroom's best card of the year. All jokes aside, though, I'm just like, yeah, who's this man? You know this man? The best promoter in the world, and for him to reach out to us and 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 sign us is unbelievable. It's a dream come true. And I'm no longer. Oh, that's Brock Jarvis. Due to visa issues, the goal remains the same. That's to win, and I'm gonna win in a devastate, a devastating knockout fashion. And you know, I'm I'm out there to prove a point that I deserve the world title and that I deserve to be world champion. Obviously I want to impress, but um, I want to go out there and I want to win every round, I want to win every minute. Being world champion at the same time as my brother. But what's the weather in Fresno, Fresno California family. right now? Me and my brother, the city of San Antonio, I'm really motiva motivated to get that world title shot and I know it's going to come. For me, I think it's just one step at a time. I've got a hard fight on Saturday night against a tough opponent and uh, I'll get to that and then we'll go from there. 
Oh, here y'all go. T well, Black Vanilla. And, uh, three, like here you go. Two great fighters here and two great trainers as well. These two not fighting each other, of course, on Saturday night. But Brock Jarvis, one of the most impressive, most scintillating talents in Australian boxing, makes his matchroom debut for us on Saturday night. Delighted to also be joined by his trainer, Jeff Fennick. And to my right, Jesse Rodriguez, one of the rising stars in the a, in a flyweight division. And of course, his trainer, Robert Garcia, as well. Big part of the action on Saturday night. Their opponents getting their medicals done ahead of their fights. Jesse Rodriguez against Burgos and Brock Jarvis Jarvis against Rodriguez, but not this Rodriguez. Um, Brock, I'm going to start with you, mate. Welcome, and, and thanks for making the trip over from, from Australia. Australia is such a big, important market for us um, on the zone now, and, and a real bloom area. I can only do a Liverpool accent. You're ready to pop. And maybe a Hackney accent, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, me and, me and Jeff, we, we work real hard, and, you know, very grateful for the opportunity to, to be on such a, an amazing show. Obviously, Mikey Garcia is, you know, one of the all-time greats. So, uh, for me, it's it's a it's an amazing privilege, and um, you know, I've been working real hard, and I'm I'm ready to um, to go to work. Obviously, it's a, a big platform and occasion for you on Saturday, but you've also been putting the hard work and the time in in the gyms here. Uh, in the US. I know you've sparred with a lot of these guys previously. I think Montana Love and obviously Devin Haney before and been putting in the work with Keith Hunter and those guys as well. A big part of your preparation has been the quality sparring you've been getting in the US. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've been training at um, a lot of Bones Adams gym in Vegas and um, we've been working with the guys there. Great, great group of guys and they've been helping me out and uh, you know, I'm very, very thankful for that and it's got me ready. Undefeated and I know very aggressive in terms of your development as well. Um, and not a million miles away from, from challenging for a title as well. But these kind of experiences, pivotal to your development as well. And, and for me, trying to give you these opportunities, these experiences, grow your profile before you're 100% ready to go and challenge for the world title. Yeah, one step at a time for me. I think, um, you know, I've got a tough fight on Saturday night and uh, I've prepared for a hard 10 rounds and that's what I'm expecting. So um, we're ready for that. Well, former world champion, the legend Jeff Fennick as well. Welcome, Jeff. There's not many bigger fans of Brock Jarvis. We know there's millions of them around the world, particularly uh, women as well. This guy is, is the Australian hunk of boxing, of course. And maybe you were once in your day, Jeff, as well. But right Ooh, where now, the ladies a at? trainer and a great trainer. But I know you... I heard the Aussie ladies some freaks. Brock, but a massive fan of this young man. Yeah, I grew up... Um uh, in a bit of trouble when I was young, and then um, Brock's uncle, who's a, an amazing uh, rugby league football player, but also as a police. We've had him on the channel before. Um, a big part in taking me off the streets and putting me into the youth boys club and, uh, and helping me. And then, um, you know, seven or eight years ago, I get a knock on the door from um, Brock's father, and um, he asked me, Would I be interested in helping and training? Young Brock, and um, immediately um, I said yes. I took him out of the back. We'd done some training, and um, the rest is history. Eddie. It's 19 fights, 19 wins, 17 knockouts, and um, I think that America and the people of the zone are going to see something very, very special. They're going to see somebody who throws, you know, well up to 100 punches every round, and uh, he's you know, very, very committed, and we look, we're very, very blessed and honoured to be sitting here with you guys, especially with the Garcia family, um, who I respect uh, totally, and um, I'm looking forward to this uh, fight night on Saturday night. Although boxing is, is booming in Australia right now, you know, you spent a lot of your time as well fighting internationally. Do you see the importance of that for a young fighter's development as well? Of course, the plan for us is to have big stadium fights with Brock Jarvis in Australia as well. But the key to those appearances globally and getting the, the rounds of sparring in, in the US as well and, and on stages like this, so important for his development. Yeah, it is. Eddie. There's a lot of times we'll get an Aussie guy who'll just go overseas um, for that one-off trip and all of a sudden they get shocked. They get, you know, stage fright and uh, people think, wow, could he really fight? Well, this guy's travelled the world. We've been to Japan sparring, we've been to Mexico, we've been to America, we've been to Bangkok. And uh, so this kid's really, really ready. And um, we thank all the people back at home that have supported us uh, throughout his you know, brief career that have supported us to, to make sure we've had been in this position. And now we've got, you know, the best... In the business, we've got our, with you guys, with Matchroom, and um, we can't ask for any more than that. And now we're just, it's all in our court. We've just got to prove to everybody that we can fight. Well, thank you, Jeff, and, and thank you, Brock. We look forward to a great, great fight, fight on Saturday night. Robert and Jesse. Robert, as much as uh, 
Jeff's big fan of, of Brock Jarvis. You as well, huge fan of Jesse Rodriguez. And Mikey as well. I've got to say, Mikey plagues me all the time about Jesse Rodriguez. This young man is a great talent. Uh, it's Burgos for him on Saturday night and then looking for a shot at the World Championship as well. But an outstanding fighter in Jesse Rodriguez. Definitely, uh Eddie, uh, first of all, thanks for giving us the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I know that uh, Jesse, in the next few fights, he'll be among the best pound for pound fighters in the world because he's that talented, you know. Uh, you know, we all know it. We all see it in the gym. You know, we, we just need that opportunity. And uh, and I'm glad you guys are giving it to us. Uh, I know we're, we're going we're gonna to do something together very, very good and uh, build this kid to be pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world because I know I. I know my boxing, and uh, everybody in my gym knows the same. You know, my gym is full of talent. You guys know my, my, my stable, but he's one of, the, one of the most talented fighters in my gym. Well, I must know that because every time I put a fight to you, and uh, you've never turned one down, whether it's Kayaguchi, whether it's Soto, whether it's Bermudez, whether it's Burgos, you're just ready to, to let him fly now. We need that opportunity. You know, I, I know there's also a title fight at the same weight division uh, Saturday night. We would love to get the winner. You know, you know, he's ready for any any of the champions at 108. And eventually, we're, we're, we're also going to look into 112, uh, 150, you know, move up three, four divisions because I know, I know this kid's going to be that type of fighter that wins titles in four or five different divisions. Well, Jesse, uh, welcome, and, and uh, translator as well to help if needed. But uh, great words from Robert Garcia. You really are renowned as, as a top, top fighter in that gym, which in itself is a great achievement. Yeah. But a big moment for you on Saturday. Yeah, of course. You know, uh, like Robert said, first off, thank you for the opportunity. I'm happy to be here in Fresno, a beautiful stadium. Uh, I, get a, I get to show my talent on the zone come Saturday night. And, you know, I'm more than ready for whatever Burgos has to bring. You share that confidence as well that, that Robert has with you, Kai Gucci, Soto, Bermudez. You're ready for all comers. Just need that opportunity. Yeah, of course. You know, I've been ready since I was 19, 20. I was, I was waiting for the opportunity. And, you know, one came for this fight, but it fell through. And I believe everything happens for a reason. I'm going to keep working, keep getting my wins up. And, you know, the title shot will come. And finally, a word for your uh, Mexican fans, of which there are many as well. Just want to say a few words to them as well. Uh, tune in Saturday night. I'm going to show you an uh, explosive performance, uh, your original Bam, Rod Bam Rodriguez performance, and don't miss it. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Brock. Thank you, Jeff. We look forward to seeing these two great young fighters shine in important fights in their career on Saturday night. Yeah, they really dragged this. They've really dragged this press conference out. Geez. So now, let me see who's supposed to be next. Elwin Soto, Jonathan Gonzalez, and then Mikey Garcia and Sandor Martin. This is going to be on the zone. Here, let's go look at it real quick. I'll tell you exactly what uh, time it's going to be coming on. On Saturday. The card is going to be starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on the zone. Let's see where we at. Let's go back to today. Go back to the press conference. Take a time out. Like the video. Subscribe. What is it? Um, live. I haven't tried out the watch party feature yet. Let me try that soon. Oh, we still got Mark Castro, so three more fights left on this undercard. This shit gonna go all night. And uh, I never thought the opportunity would come for Mark Castro this early in his career to fight in Fresno, but it was always a very important step in his journey to start fighting here, to fill in stadiums here, and what an opportunity for him on Saturday night. I'm already roasting up up here. This man is so cool, he's got a jacket on as well. It's, it's coming up to 26, 27 degrees, Mark. Welcome. What an opportunity for you. We've seen people around you all week. You know, a lot of media activity as well. Fans going crazy, expecting around 7,000 here on Saturday. What a moment for you to make your Fresno debut on this card in the professional ranks. Uh, thank you, Eddie. Um, I'm really grateful and um, excited for the opportunity. I'm just ready to put on a show in front of the fans this Saturday night. It's quite strange for you to not be fighting on a Canelo Alvarez bill because that's been a common theme so far. But this is almost more important to you, isn't it? We know that it's important to build you as a star in your hometown, home city. And to get to do this at this stage in your career, you're going to get an unbelievable reception on Saturday night. 
Yes, I'm just uh, excited to see the fans' reactions and the fans um, coming out in support. I know the support is real here in Fresno, and everybody knows me growing up, knows my family, and they just know that a lot of hard work and sacrifice went into this. Obviously, Saturday night, and then maybe even get a run out before the end of the year as well. But what is the weather in Fresno right now? One of the top US amateurs uh, in coming through the system as well. You've kind of gone through a, a small part of that development stage so far, but 2022 is a big year. I know you're not looking past Lunar on Saturday night, but but this is important times here to finish off 2021. But so many big opportunities to arise in 2022 as well. Well, the main thing I stay in the gym. I stay. Focus. It's uh, 71 degrees in Fresno, so it is a little brisk. Best version of myself, and I feel like 2022, I'm gonna keep getting better and better. Thank you, Mark. Angel Luna, welcome. I mean, this guy looks cool, but I gotta say, Angel, that's a cheeky bow tie you've got on there as well. This is his hometown. There's gonna be a huge support for him as well. But you're coming to fight on Saturday night for sure. Yeah, I'm ready for the fight. Thank you for the fight. I'm ready for the fight. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for support. My man looked like he got some fire ass bean pies. Este sábado con Dios delante y estamos ready para la guerra. Esto es esto es boxeo y yo estoy listo para esto. We're going to make sure that we give a great fight this Saturday, and I'm very ready for this. I'm taking this very seriously for this fight on Saturday. Thank you, Angel. And finally, for you, Mark, as well, expecting a great fight. This young man had plenty, plenty, plenty more experience than you in the pro game. This is a really solid step up for you. Yes, I feel like um, my team, my manager, and you as well are doing a great job, and I'm just doing my job too. I'm staying in the gym, and I believe the best version of myself can be beat. Thank you, Mark Castro. Castro against Luna. Massive opportunity for Mark Castro. The Fresno debut in front of a huge crowd this Saturday night live on The Zone. Gentlemen, we have a head to head here, please. See, when somebody shows up dressed like that to a press conference, meaning the guy that Castro's fighting, I want to root for him. Like, I'm going to, I think this guy's going to do it. You got to fear somebody who shows up like that. Like, he showed up with a bow tie and some blue hued gaiters. It's like one of the longest press conferences ever. So if you don't know, Eddie Hearn got uh, his own day in Fresno, California. So he's got an Eddie Hearn matchroom day. I don't know if it's the 16th, the day of the fight, or if it's today. Uh, Montana Love has signed with matchroom. If you don't know, he was the guy that had the fight of the night against um, against Ivan Baranchek on a Jake Paul versus Ty Wood Tyron Woodley undercard. And here we are at the co-main event event of a pack card on saturday night this is going to be a tremendous fight a tremendous war for the wbo light flyweight championship of the world elwin soto against jonathan gonzalez the mandatory challenger for elwin's wbo championship i've got to say this division right now of course on fire when you talk about light fly with kaiaguchi and jesse rodriguez and bermudez um, so many opportunities in the division of course these guys have the potential and ability to move up through the gears through flyweight super flyweight with julio cesar martinez with estrada with rung Versailles, with with chocolatito so many great opportunities at this weight class it's great to see these guys look get how the tiny they are this is the most entertaining weight class some little dude right now jonathan i'll start with you. they'll beat your ass this fire, mandatory challenger as well you look fresh you look ready to go to become a world champion on saturday yes i'm very prepared it's been over 10 weeks of training camp <clears throat> i want to thank mashroom i want to thank all of y'all coming down here um training camp has been great i'm going to be in the champion number 62 of puerto rico Obviously, this is Mexico against Puerto Rico. Is uh, we, every promoter loves that narrative as well. But this is a great champion as well. All action. This should gel into a fantastic fight. It seems that every time you guys meet in the light flyweight division or flyweight or super flyweight, we see all action fights. You expect that seeing this man's style is going to be a tremendous fight. The only thing I can say that um, Saturday night is going to be a war. I'm coming to be the next world champion, 100 champion, and look for big fights. Obviously, big unification fights out there for you as well, looking to become a world champion for Puerto Rico. It would mean a huge amount for you as well. All the sacrifices you made in this sport, I guess this is the pivotal moment of your career. You have to make it count. I have to, I have to be world champion now. This, this could be my last opportunity, and that's why I have trained hard for this fight. And 
Jude, um, October 16 is going to be a great night, and Puerto Rico is going to have his another other champion. Thank you, Jonathan. And Elwin, through, through your translator there as well, uh, Jonathan says Mexico v. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico will have a, a new world champion on Saturday. He expects a war. Do you expect a war as well on Saturday? ¿Qué piensas? ¿Crees que será una guerra? No, claro, va a ser una, una guerra bastante grande y la verdad que yo solamente voy a salir a hacer mi trabajo. Of course, it's going to be a big war, and what I know is that I'm going to go out there and win. Obviously, there is uh, discussions and, and looking ahead to unification fights as well, but this is your mandatory challenger. This is a very, very tough fight for you on Saturday. Este, hay muchas peleas posibles de unificación, pero este es tu retador obligatorio. ¿Qué piensas al respecto? Eh, pienso que va a ser una, una defensa un poco difícil, pero pues sabemos que va, vamos a hacer un buen trabajo y salir de este compromiso y, y hacer más defensa o si no, unificaciones. I think it will be a defense that will be kind of tough. And I know we will do very well uh, in passing this commitment. And then after that, either we will look for unification fights or move up to a div another division. Obviously, last time out was crazy on the Canelo undercard, 73,000 people. Uh, talk to us about that experience as well. And another big experience here in front of 7,000 outdoors. Great times for you on the zone. En tu última pelea, peleaste en el respaldo de Canelo, 73 a mil personas. Platícanos sobre esa experiencia y también de tu experiencia aquí en Fresno, donde estarás peleando a través de The Zone. Eh, la verdad que fue una experiencia es pelear, pelear ahí en la cartelera de Canelo. Eh, nunca me lo esperaba, pero fue un, fue un orgullo pelear ahí y le agradezco a la empresa Mushroom por darme la oportunidad. Y claro, también me siento muy, muy a gusto aquí en, en Fresno, California y daremos una buena pelea. To be able to fight there in the Canelo card, it's something I never expected, and it was a great opportunity. So I'm grateful to Matchroom uh, for the opportunity, and, and oh, here as well. I feel very nice here fighting in Fresno, California, where I know I'm going to give a great fight. Well, thank you, Elwin. And as I said, Mexico against Puerto Rico, the WBO light flyweight championship of the world. This will be a cracking fight here in Fresno, live on the zone. Gentlemen, we have a head to head here, please. <laughs> Welcome back as we head to the main event on Saturday night. Big moment for both of these men. Of course, Mikey Garcia against Sandor Martin here in Fresno, live on the zone all around the world. The four division champion against the European champion. Sandor, I'll start with you. Special thanks as well to Chris Kirchi of OPI and our partners there in, in Spain and Italy. Um, through your translator as well here. Sandor, this is a massive opportunity for you. And when I looked at opportunities and options for Mikey Garcia, I saw you in every ranking across every single governing body. Of course, headlining our shows in Spain, this seemed like the obvious choice. You said yes very, very quickly. Este, una gran oportunidad para ti, Sandor. Cuando estaba mirando a los posibles rivales de Mikey Garcia, estuviste clasificado en cada uno de los organismos. Este es una gran, gran oportunidad para ti. Y este, cuando se te presentó la oportunidad, dijiste que sí lo querías muy rápidamente. Sí, evidentemente no podías aprovechar esta oportunidad de enfrentar a un gran campeón como Mikey García. Cuando uno entra al deporte del boxeo es para aceptar los grandes retos y es por eso que vine aquí para cumplir mis sueños. He trabajado toda la vida por ello y ahora que tengo la oportunidad no la voy a dejar escapar. It's a great opportunity and I have to take advantage of it. Uh, it's a great champion to be fighting against Mikey Garcia and that's why I got involved in boxing to accept the great challenges to uh, achieve my dreams. So I've worked all my life for this opportunity. 
You've been cruising through the European defences. You've hardly lost a round to these challenges. Is this what you need now, a chance to prove to everybody that you are a world-class fighter? And this is a massive opportunity for you, for Spanish boxing, for your family. This is exactly what you want in your career. En tus defensas del título europeo ha sido un poco fácil, pero ¿crees que esta oportunidad es lo que necesitas para mostrar al mundo que estás a un nivel mundial? Evidentemente, debutar contra Mikey García en Estados Unidos es una gran presentación, es una gran oportunidad y evidentemente pues creo que sí que es lo que necesito. Necesito una exposición mundial, quiero las grandes peleas, quiero estar en los grandes eventos y quiero enfrentar a los grandes nombres de, del boxeo mundial. Es por eso que, que he venido. Mikey García es uno de los mejores. Yo siempre quise enfrentar a los mejores y aquí estoy. Otros no hubiesen aceptado el reto, yo he venido. It's very important to be making my U.S. debut against Mikey Garcia. It's a great opportunity and a great uh, opportunity to present myself for the first time in the United States. And yes, this is the challenge that I need. I need exposure on the big level so that after, on the world level, so that after I can have the big fights, the big events, fight the big names in boxing. And that's why I came here. Mikey Garcia is one of the best fighters, and I've always wanted to fight the best fighters. And finally, a lot of people look at this fight as a warm-up fight for Mikey, Mikey Garcia. I see the look in your eye. I know what this means to you. You're ready to give it everything on Saturday night. Quizás muchos piensan que es simplemente una pelea para que Mikey se mantiene ocupado, pero tú ves que tienes mucha determinación para salir con la victoria, ¿verdad? Faltan 48 horas para que el mundo entero me conozca. Los campeones exist existen para ser derrotados, y es a eso a lo que he venido. 48 hours is how long it will take for me to present myself to the world and for the rest of the world champions to be put on notice. Thank you, Sandor. Mikey, welcome back. Great to see you. Thank you. Been a while, you know, all of a sudden. You were, you were one of the lucky ones who boxed just before the pandemic. So, you you know, you weren't inactive before then, but it has been a long time. Over 18 months out of the ring now. You're back, ready. It's going to be some occasion here on, in Fresno as well. And a tough test against Sandor Martin. I know a lot of people look at this as your, your comeback fight, if you want, your warm-up fight. But this is a guy who's really coming to win on Saturday. Definitely. Look, uh, we're excited to be back. Excited to get back this Saturday, you know, and show the world that I'm, I'm still here. I keep reminding everybody that I'm, I'm here. I haven't, haven't left. There's still much more, you know, from Mikey Garcia to, to give the, the fans. This is just another fight to get back and show them. Um, you know, I, I did take the fight with Jesse. We had plans to have a great, you know, year uh, last year, and because of the pandemic, you know, everybody kind of froze. Everything, everything went silent. But uh, I'm excited to finally get back, uh, get in the, in, the, in the groove of things, and look for much bigger fights. Uh, big, I want to be big again, big title fights. And, and those are the fights that excite me the most. So that's why this is another step in that direction. How, how easy is it to sometimes overlook the challenge of a Sandor Martin when you talk about those major fights as well? We know this is a big fight for you, big fight for Fresno, but I know that you want those career-defining fights. Now you're fighting someone that has the hunger like you probably had when yeah. you were coming through without championships as well. This guy's coming to change his life on Saturday. Look, I, I've been there. I've been in, in his shoes, in his place where you want that opportunity, where you want to show your fans and, and the whole world you know, what you're made of. So I know what he's thinking. I know what, what he has in his mind and, and the future that he sees uh, if, if he were to beat me on Saturday. Um, but I ain't going to let that, that happen. You know, I'm, I'm also on a track to, to reach, you know, greater success, greater fights. Um, I'm not overlooking him. You know, I got to take things very serious because I know I'm going to have the best version of Sandra Martin on Saturday night. You know, this is going to be probably bigger fight for him than if he was fighting in Europe, you know, for a vacant title. You know, a vacant world title that doesn't highlight enough, doesn't probably do enough for him as this fight does. This is at the highest level, the highest stage of his career. So I, I can expect the very, very best Sandor Martin on Saturday night. But that's what I want. I want the very best so that I can get the very best out of me also. If I had an opponent that I knew he was going to take a knee, it doesn't motivate me. That doesn't do it for me. That doesn't excite me. I need someone that can really push me and test me in order for me to bring out the very best. You are a big favorite to win this fight, and I know winning is always the bottom line, but do you feel like you have to win in style to make a statement? Is that the intention on Saturday night to go out and put a performance on the zone that people turn around and say, wow, Mikey Garcia is a player, he's there, he's ready to fight the best, and you have to look good winning, I feel. Yes, I, I do feel that I have to you know, perform you know, and, and win you know, spectacular, but 
I also I keep people I keep hearing people asking if I just if I want if I need a knockout. I don't need a knockout to look great. I don't need a knockout to to show everybody who I am as a fighter and that I still have everything and that I haven't lost a step. I just gotta do well, perform well, do my job, get the win in a way that people can re recognize my talent is still here, and that's what I plan on doing. And finally, a word on, on Fresno as well. Rick and those guys done a great job here. You've been out, you know, promoting yourself and the fight on Saturday in, in this great place. And it's uh, going to be a great crowd here as well. Looking forward to fighting in Fresno yeah. on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all the love and support from all the fans up here in Fresno and Central Valley. I, uh, I'm here, and, and I, I'm glad to be here. Uh, big thanks to Rick, who was big, big help, you know, big support, organizing, helping with the event. Uh, we'll be working again, you know, together because it's, it's been wonderful. Again, the zone and Matchroom, everybody's been on board really, really well, working very well with me. Um, I, can't, I can't say anything else other than thank you to everybody. Well, thank you, Mikey. Four division world champion against the number one star in Spanish boxing right now, Sandor Martin. We expect a great fight here in Fresno, live on the zone, wherever you are. Do not miss it, gentlemen. We have a head to head up here, please. Thank you. Jeez, what? They sure drug that out. My Lord. We spent the whole hour here. Makes me not even want to watch the fight. That's the, the that press conference don't have no replay value. Nothing happened of note except Eddie Hearn uh, and Matchroom got his own day in Fresno, California. Matchroom signed Montana Love, and there's a water crisis going on. And pray for the people in Fresno so they can get their water. But besides that, ah, I am glad that is over. So man, we're gonna be here um, tomorrow for the weigh-in. Jeez. You know what, though? Let me go ahead and say something. What if that dude, Sandor Martin, end up giving Mikey Garcia a real hard time on Saturday? That's very in line with 2021. Crazy shit been happening. What if Mikey Garcia go in there and look like shit? Or that dude win? Or if dude, like, beat Mikey Garcia, but Mikey Garcia get the decision, if you know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to say. But, man, ill. I'm going to go play some video games like bro or do something like that really ill. So anyway, let's talk about the card real quick before we go. Oh, uh, you know, I mean, let me stop complaining because, you know, uh, I keep talking about how, like, you know, some of these press conferences, you never know what you're going to get. You know, some of them that you don't expect would be some crazy shit go down and some of them would just be, you know, like that. So here's the card. Mikey Garcia versus Sandor Martin, Ben Rodriguez versus uh, Jose Alejandro Burgos, Elwin Soto versus Jonathan Gonzalez, Brock Jarvis versus Alejandro Farias uh, Rodriguez, Diego Pacheco versus the Lucas de Abreu, Nikita Bobby versus the Sandy Duversoni, Mark Castro versus the Angel Luna. This is Mark Castro's hometown, by the way. You no, know, but yeah, man, I'm out of here. I'm sorry. I'm not spending. We've been here way too damn long. You know, shout out to the. Uh, How dare you? Angel, but we get.